Howdy again everyone, and today I'm checking out a brand new autofocus low budget full frame lens for Canon's EOS R mirrorless cameras from Chinese manufacturer Yongnu. It's the YN 35mm f2 RGF DSM. Well, I say it's new, but Yongno actually launched this same lens for Sony's E-mount cameras I think about two years ago now. This Canon RF version of the lens has the same optics, apparently, but it has been optimised and tweaked for the EOS R system. As I mentioned, it is only for Canon's EOS R mirrorless cameras, not for their digital SLRs or their EOS M camera systems. But that's still pretty awesome news to see some low budget autofocus lenses finally arriving on the system. The lenses price will be in the description below, and if I forget to put it there please remind me in the comments. I'd like to thank Yongno for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review, I'll be looking at both its strengths and weaknesses. Everyone loves a 35mm lens on a full frame camera, well almost everyone, as they offer a decently wide angle of view, while still giving you just a little emphasis on the subject you're shooting, and an aperture as bright as f2 means you'll be able to shoot in lower light conditions and get somewhat out of focus backgrounds in your images, particularly if you shoot closely to your subject. The build quality of this lens feels anything but low budget, it's surprisingly good. It's metallic and feels nice and solid, there are some nice little touches like the writing on the barrel being engraved onto the metal. The rear lens mount is made of metal and it has a generous weather sealing gasket. There's a USB-C connection on the side which is securely covered by a tight fitting rubber hood which enables you to upgrade the lens's firmware if necessary, which I did have to do and it was very easy, you just download it from Yongno's website. You also get an auto manual focus switch. The lens's manual focus ring is rubberized, turns smoothly and works impressively responsively with the focus motor. When you set this lens to autofocus, that focus ring will now control the aperture for you instead, so it works just like one of Canon's control rings in that way. Some further good news is that the lens displays very little focus breathing as you focus in and out, so that could make it useful for video makers. Now onto autofocus, I am happy to report that on my Canon EOS R5 this little third party lens focused very quickly, very accurately and silently too. It had no problems with eye detection autofocus or anything like that, so it's a surprisingly good performance there. However, occasionally the lens would have trouble communicating with the camera when turned on, and the focus system wouldn't work at all. In that situation, I found that taking out the camera's battery and taking off the lens, then putting it all back together seemed to fix things. Whether that's an issue just with my particular copy of the lens, I don't know. The lens comes with a decently sized plastic hood, it has a 52mm diameter filter thread, and it does not have image stabilisation. Overall, the Canon version of this lens has some minor improvements over the older Sony version and works very well, apart from the odd hiccup when turning the camera on. Much more important though is image quality. I'll be testing this one on my Canon EOS R5 with its 45 megapixel sensor. At f2, in the middle of the image, the lens is averagely sharp and contrast is just ok. The image corners are a lot darker than the middle, but sharpness doesn't really look any worse. However, we are catching some clear chromatic aberration here. Stop down to f2.8 for a lot more brightness and a little more clarity in those corners, and the middle looks sharper now too. Stop down to f4 for a little more contrast and very good sharpness in the middle, and the corners look slightly better again, although that rather strong colour fringing on contrasting edges is sticking around. The corners remain this sharp down to f11, where a little softness emerges from the effect of diffraction. Overall, on a 45 megapixel full frame camera, the lens is slightly struggling, but it is usably sharp. It won't be your first choice for corner image quality at bright apertures or high contrast, but I've certainly seen worse than this before, and owners of lower resolution cameras will be a bit more satisfied. Ok, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. These pictures are taken with in camera corrections turned off. Here you can see a slight pincushion distortion in the image corners, as well as a lot of dark vignetting at f2. 
Stop down to f2.8 or f4 to see it reduced, but the image corners remain this dark from there, so it would be advisable to correct your images in editing. Now, let's see about close-up image quality. The lens is only really able to get you as close as 35 centimeters to your subject, just an average distance really. At f2, image quality becomes much softer and ghostlier when shooting close-up. Stop down to f2.8 though, or f4, to see very nice improvements, leading to sharp close-up image quality. So, if you are shooting close-up, stop down. Let's see how the lens works against bright light. It's an average performance here. We don't see many flaring artifacts, although there is a little bit of subtle glaring, even when those bright lights are right in the edges or just out of view. While we're working in the dark, let's see how it copes with coma. Even at f2, there's only a small amount of coma smearing in the corners on bright points of light. It's slightly reduced at f2.8 and totally gone at f4, so that's a fair performance really. Let's zoom out and look at sun stars. Stop down to f8 and they begin to emerge. Stop down to f11 or f16 and they look really spectacular. This lens can get you somewhat out of focus backgrounds. The quality of its bokeh is impressively soft. Those backgrounds look lovely to me in nearly all situations. And finally, related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2, we see an awful lot of pink and green color fringing on bokeh highlights. At f2.8, it's greatly reduced, and at f4, it's gone. So then, overall, Yongno are no strangers to making low-budget, reasonable quality lenses like this, and this 35mm offering is pleasing enough for the price you're paying. It's not the sharpest lens in the world, but it's certainly not too bad in that area, and its build quality and its bokeh are all very nice. If you own a Canon EOS R system mirrorless camera and you are on a budget, then there aren't really many options for you out there, but this Yongno lens will be acceptable and can get you some decent enough images. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Testing lenses like this is a huge, huge pleasure, but it's also very challenging and time consuming. If you'd like to support this channel, then check out my link to my Patreon page down in the description below. There you'll find all kinds of exclusive content and videos for supporters. Ciao for now.